the most absurd sight of the day yesterday came courtesy of Dylan Mulvaney. Now, you will recognize Dylan Mulvaney from such wonderful videos as that time I got the president of the United States to talk about how I was a woman, even though I'm a man, or alternatively, how I got the president of the United States to endorse transing the children. Well, Dylan Mulvaney had a one-year anniversary party. It was, it was one year as a girl. It was Dylan Mulvaney's Day 365 Live. It was a cabaret show at the iconic Rainbow Room in New York. And, uh, and Dylan Mulvaney dressed up as a woman, put his hair up as though he was Audrey Hepburn and wore a, a sort of classic looking gown and then proceeded to do a bunch of musical cabaret numbers and concluded with this particular number in which many of the Daily Wire voices and hosts are featured, pointing out that Dylan Mulvaney is in fact a dude masquerading as a woman and doing so to the great applause and acclaim of a crowd and making money off of this and doing great by it, by pushing the lie that boys can become girls, girls can become boys. So Dylan Mulvaney, to rebut the accusation that Dylan Mulvaney is actually an attention-seeking narcissist who desperately wants everybody to give him money for being a fake girl for a year, which, by the way, is precisely what's happening. If you're, you know, this, was, this was to celebrate Dylan Mulvaney's one year as a girl. You know what my daughters did on their one year as a girl anniversary? They had their first birthday party. That's what they did. They remember it because they were one year old. You can't be one year as a girl when you're a dude. But that's the whole point, right? I mean, the, the whole point here is to, is to, this is ultimate face tattoo syndrome. What if you act as though you're a girl? What, what if you masquerade using all of the stereotypical ideas about women? You, you, play, you play act being a girl for a year, and then you get all sorts of contracts from, from mascara companies. And you go meet with the president of the United States, and you're a better woman than all of the women. And you're a hero. You're a hero of the, of the republic. But it's, it, you're not doing it for personal benefit at all. Personal benefit has nothing to do with it. And it's not about attention seeking at all. It's just about how you feel on the inside, which is why you would do a, a cabaret show, like full on with orchestration and everything at the Rainbow Room. And apparently, actually charge ticket prices is what I've learned. Apparently, that was reported uh, to, to things like this. Here is a Dylan Mulvaney's act yesterday. I feel supported. And you know what? I'm feeling lucky. Let's Google my name. <laughs> And Dylan Mulvaney goes back of a screen and someone is changing his outfit for him because it's a costume Dylan show. Dylan Mulvaney is intentionally degrading women every time he does this woman face minstrel show routine. That one can say he is a woman and become one of the most influential women in America in just six months of wearing dresses and ironing his hair. The patriarchy always wins, gang. Oh, and there is Dylan Mulvaney as Audrey Hepburn. The difference being that Audrey Hepburn was an actual woman with a vagina. Why would you give them even a second of your big day? Well, these are the people I have to deal with on a regular basis, so I thought I should include them in the evening. But that doesn't mean you have to listen to them. Well, I've always loved a little constructive criticism. Baby, there's nothing constructive about that. Right. And it's not just criticism, it's indoctrination. Mm -hmm. Trans and non-binary people have been around for thousands of years. Okay, and then Dylan Mulvaney sings. Dylan Mulvaney then sings. And if I only could, I'd make a deal with God, not get him to swap our places. Can we pause there? I'm going to say something that might make people feel a little bit uncomfortable. Um, I'm trying really hard to maintain a relationship with God, and I don't think that he made a mistake with me. Um, and that maybe one day I will actually be grateful for being trans that this isn't some curse, but it's just a different path to the same destination. Okay, this is all pre-scripted, guys, obviously. It's part of his, like, literally the music stops when Dylan Mulvaney wants to have his little chat about his relationship with God, which has not come up, as far as I'm aware, in any of his other public sort of appearances. But now it's so personal. It's so personal. The criticism is all personal. You're doing this in public in a scripted setting that you are charging money for. It, it's, it's an amazing thing. First, let's again talk about the fact that, you know, the end of life for all of us will look the same. We will all be dead. But you don't just need a will, as we've already discussed. You also need life insurance, right? God forbid you're walking along the road and suddenly a car hops the curve. And as that Ford F-150 is coming directly at you and that grill gets closer and closer, you think to yourself, man, should have listened to Shapiro. I should have gone over to Policy Genius. Policy Genius makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from top companies and find your lowest price with Policy Genius. You can find life insurance policies that start at just 25 bucks per month for a million bucks in coverage. 
Some options offer coverage in as little as a week and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Geniuses licensed agents can help you find coverage options in as little as a week. They work for you. They don't work for the insurance companies. So that means that they don't have any incentive to give you like the wrong advice. There are no added fees. Your personal information remains private. Your loved ones deserve that financial safety net and you deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. Head on over to policygenius.com slash Shapiro or click the link in the description. Get your free life insurance quotes. See how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash Shapiro. Again, policygenius.com slash Shapiro. Well, we need a better person to fill that job as president. And you, as a business owner, you might need better employees to fill the jobs that you have open today, but it's hard to find the right people for those jobs. It doesn't have to be. That's why ZipRecruiter exists. ZipRecruiter helps you find the most qualified people for your roles fast. Right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. ZipRecruiter's matching technology helps you find the most qualified candidates for a wide range of roles. If you see a candidate you like, you can easily send them a personal invite so they're more likely to apply. Their user-friendly dashboard makes it easy to filter, review, and rate your candidates all from one place. See why the majority of employers count on ZipRecruiter. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within day one. Use my exclusive web address to try ZipRecruiter for free. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash D-A-I-L-Y-W-I-R-E. ZipRecruiter is indeed the smartest way to hire. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. Use my exclusive web address right now. You can try it out for free. Get the best employees for your open jobs. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. ZipRecruiter remains the smartest way to hire. ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. And if you don't believe that this has to do with earning money at all for Dylan Mulvaney, it is just purely Dylan Mulvaney being Dylan Mulvaney. I ask you a question. Why is this person getting ad deals for being a man masquerading as a woman? Also, at the end of the show, Mulvaney joyfully, this is according to Variety, at the end of the show, Mulvaney joyfully declared that she is ready to start her journey of womanhood. She recently told Variety's Mark Malkin, part of her new chapter will be scaling back from TikTok and exploring new artistic endeavors. She hinted that one possibility could be creating a musical series in the vein of, in the vein of Smash. You mean that this person is going to make an entire career out of pretending to be a... No. No, you shock me. It was all just a personal decision about the interior and the interior gender dysphoria of this troubled person. And everybody should just pretend that he is a woman for his own mental health. But it has nothing to do with a brand, it has nothing to do with fame. It has nothing to, if you ever remember the show Smash, I totally could see myself doing sort of a TV show with singing where I play myself, said Mulvaney on the red carpet. It would be very dramatic. I camp. Yeah, this is a, it's, it's, it's also, it's also authentic, guys. It's, it's also authentic. This is an authentic woman, an authentic, authentic woman. And again, the whole point for the left is you personalize the political and then insist that nobody say a damn thing because it might be offensive. It might be, it might, it might make people feel bad. So you take a political statement like a man can be a woman and every child should be taught that a boy can be a girl and every child should be treated as essentially non-binary or you are forcing cisgenderism upon them. You take that extraordinarily radical position and then you telescope it down into the life of a person like a Dylan Mulvaney. And then if you critique this by saying Dylan Mulvaney is in fact a man masquerading as a woman and making lots of money for doing so, then this is, be you're mean, you're cruel, it's bad. It's a, it's, a, it's a perverse little game. And when you are charging $5 a pop to watch Dylan Mulvaney sing a scripted show about how, how tearful and cryy Dylan Mulvaney is over videos of me and Matt Walsh and Candace Owens, I don't believe you. Number one, I don't believe you. Number two, I think you're making money off it. So I think you're doing great. And number three, you are making a broader political point that has the impact on anyone else. As I've, as I've said before, how you treat people in your day-to-day -day life is a different question from serious political questions that are impacted by very famous people saying things that have inherently political. You were sitting with the, the president of the United States and promoting a particular agenda. Stop pretending that what you do has no impact on anyone else. It is not true. It is fundamentally untrue. You know that, of course, which is why you're doing it. Okay, time for some things I like. So the wokes are on the warpath against a wide variety of institutions, but it is good when occasionally an institution has enough of a sense of self-preservation not to surrender to it. So one of those institutions is the National Audubon Society. So when you think about the National Audubon Society, you probably think of birds, right? That, that's probably what you think of because that's what the National Audubon Society does. They're all about, they're a conservation group about birds. Do you think of slavery? Do you think of the evils of slavery? Uh, probably not, because why would you? Because if you actually know anything about the Audubon Society, you spend most of your time looking at very nice pictures of birds. But apparently the Wokes were very upset because James Audubon was a slaveholder. And so what they now want to do is, um, is take his name off of the Audubon Society that, that he founded. And the National Audubon Society, to its great credit, said, no, we're not going to do that. According to the Washington Post, the move comes as about half a dozen of the organization's regional chapters have pledged to scrub his name from their titles. Part of a broader reckoning. Ah, the reckoning. Reckoning, reckoning. 
This is one of the words the media love to use, a reckoning. It's not, just a, it's not just an audaciously radical move to obliterate history. It's a reckoning. The reckoning has come. Revenge. Over to the U.S. environmental movement's history of entrenched racism. The National Audubon Society's 26-person board of directors voted to retain its current name during a Zoom meeting on Monday after more than a year of deliberating and gathering feedback from both members and outsiders. Susan Bell, chair of the board, declined to provide a breakdown of the final vote. The name has come to represent not just one person, but broader love of birds and nature, said Bell. We must recognize with the racist legacy of John James Audubon, the man. Okay, I mean, you can put up a plaque saying that this guy also had a lot of real problems and this guy thought a lot of real bad things. But can we stop pretending that people who do bad things don't also do good things or that history didn't exist or that the first pure people who have ever lived have lived in our generation? In a sign of internal strife, three board members resigned after the organization chose to retain the name. Activists in and outside of the organization have called upon the group to jettison Audubon's names. After months of conducting listening sessions and surveying people in both camps, the National Organization's Board of Directors decided that the moniker is nearly synonymous with the avian conserva conservation movement and should not be abandoned. Well, yes. I mean, of course, that happens to be true. It was his, his pictures of, the, of things like the ivory-billed woodpecker that made people even aware of the presence of these birds. But apparently, now uh, they're saying that, that because he was an unrepentant enslaver, an oppositionist, uh, an, op an opponent of the abolitionist movement, that means it's time to take his name off this thing. All righty, guys, the rest of the show is continuing right now. You're not going to want to miss it. We'll be getting into the mailbag. If you're not a member, become a member. Use code Shapiro at checkout for two months free on all annual plans. Click the link in the description and join us. 